It's tragic. Tra- I'm, I'm embarrassed, maybe ashamed to be an American to see how we're treating the Kurds. They don't have uh, anti-tank weapons. They don't have uh, medical uh, care for where they're wounded. They, they don't have mechanics to replace uh, broken axles. They don't have night goggles. Uh, they move ISIS out of a region, and they're losing their Peshmerga troops to uh, the booby traps. American businessman Foster Freeze on Midpoint here on Newsmax TV speaking out about the plight Kurdish forces face in the effort to take on ISIS. Back now on America's Forum with Miranda Khan, J.D. Hayworth. Miranda, Foster Freeze, uh, an American who is stepping up now to uh, to fund the Kurds. He's very passionate about this cause. Uh, Freeze has been traveling to the Middle East to support the Kurds, then coming back to lobby for arming and training their forces. Joining us with more on this story, Lieutenant Colonel Scott Mann. He's also the director and founder of the Stability Institute. Scott, it is great to have you back here on America's Forum. With uh, Foster Fries taking this individual effort, are we going to see funds coming from outside the U.S. government to try and aid the Kurds? Well, I'm not sure, J.D., and thanks for having me on, but, it, you know, it's, uh, it's really frustrating to see uh, an org- you know, a group like the Kurds who are pushing back from the bottom up, um, and we're not in there, you know, advising them and assisting them in doing that. Right now, it seems like it's the only option, but, but I think there's a range of ethnic groups who are willing to resist from the bottom up, but we've got to get in there and help them do it. It's essential. What should we be doing to help? Well, in addition, I mean, the Kurds are, are, are an important component of this. I think one of the things that we've got to get our head around is that there are a range of groups uh, in Iraq and Syria that are willing to resist, and maybe not necessarily along the lines that, that, you know, that we believe in, but for example, the Sunnis. Uh, I talk to folks all the time who tell me that there are a range of folks, of Sunnis, willing to resist, and yet we're not in there working from the bottom up with them really like we should be. And I think that's absolutely essential to stabilizing Iraq. Until we work with those marginalized Sunni tribes, uh, they're just going to be exploited by ISIS over and over again. But there, there's another factor in this that we're hearing about, Scott. We're hearing about Americans who have uh, who may be veterans of our armed forces going back to the Middle East to fight on the side of Christian minorities. What can you tell us about the rise of these de facto America militias? Yeah, I've heard about that too, J.D., and, you know, I think you're probably going to see more of that. I think the longer that we are uh, not involved with these bottom-up efforts, I think we're probably going to see uh, organizations self-select and go over there and try to help out where they can. I mean, obviously, I don't think that's, I don't think that's where success is going to be met. Um, the, the only way we're really going to, I think, defeat ISIS uh, is to come in from the top down and the bottom up. We've got to put our advisors, and look, we have advisors that are, that are trained for this. U.S. Army Green Berets are, are outstanding at getting into these rough areas and working from the bottom up and advising uh, irregular forces in this kind of work, but we're not doing it. And, and if we do that, J.D., we leave that critical strategic safe haven where ISIS operates completely unchecked and they, and they move with impunity. Fries had suggested that, that the U.S. should provide helicopters and tanks and, and weapons and training and humanitarian aid. Do you agree with him? Well, I, I do think that we need to provide the, what, what most people would think of as the traditional train, uh, equip, and advise type of support. So, yes, you know, pieces of equipment, um, you know, airlift and things like that. But I tell you, as I've spent my career as, as a Green Beret and as an advisor, uh, I saw this uh, in Afghanistan where we were working from the bottom up. A big component of this is actually getting into those outlying areas and, and working shoulder to shoulder with those groups that are trying to resist. That can often outpace uh, and make a bigger difference than any type of high-tech hardware. It's putting advisors on the ground who can make deep connections and work from the bottom up and, and inspire uh, groups that are resisting to do things they probably wouldn't do on their own. That, that is a critical component of advising that I talk about in my book, Game Changers, and that we promote at the Stability Institute. It's, it's a critical thing that we often overlook. Uh, a minute left, mindful of the title of your book, Game Changers. Scott, we see now ISIS going in to attack the oil fields of Libya, and the Libyans have shot down, have shut down those oil fields. What does this portend for the future in the one minute well, I think, 
Yeah, I think we've got to stop dismissing the capacity of groups like ISIS. You know, we keep saying, you know, they're JV, or we keep saying, you know, they'll never be able to govern as a caliphate. Well, guess what? They are doing those things, and they are expanding. And you know what else? Their narrative is resonating uh, with disenfranchised, honor-based clan societies all over the world to include street gangs. So we've got to start taking these guys seriously because they are uh, committed to expansion of a caliphate that they think can usher in the end of days. And they're trying to draw us in conventionally with a big military response. We've got to have boots on the ground, but we've got to get smarter about whose boots they are and how we do it. We need to advise in these dark places from the bottom up, and we have a much better chance of rendering ISIS and their ilk irrelevant. Scott Mann, former Green Beret from the Stability Institute. Thanks for your thoughts on how to deal with the instability caused by ISIS. And America's Forum will be right back.